This week, we're talking blood stains and the Trimble X7. We're covering some of the common misconceptions about laser scanning of blood stains and how to get the most out of your instrument on scenes which have a blood pattern analysis component. But this isn't just for blood stains. The techniques we'll show you apply to other minute evidence on crash or crime scenes. Stick around for the spatter episode right after the break. Let's start by talking about the challenges of laser scanning blood stains. The best stains to use for trajectory analysis are small. The big globby stains may contribute to the scene, but are difficult, if not impossible, to ascertain angle of impact on the surface. Now, because these stains are so small, sometimes only a millimeter in width, they're difficult to scan when the light beam of the laser scanner is actually larger than the spot itself. Now, as an illustration, trying to measure a blood stain with a scanner's laser beam that's larger than the stain is like trying to measure the location of a pinpoint by trying to place a quarter over it. Where is it? Well, it's somewhere under there, but we aren't exactly sure where or what size it is. That's what it's like trying to measure a small stain with a laser scanner. What you're measuring is the location of the surface that the stain is on, not the stain itself. Like it or not, that's the reality of laser scanning objects that are smaller than your beam size. Check your instrument spec sheet to see if your beam is larger than the stain you're trying to measure. Here's the other issue. Laser scanning is a two-part operation. The actual measurements are taken by bouncing an infrared laser beam off of every visible surface. The second part is taking photographs, creating a panorama, and then using that panorama to colorize those infrared gathered measurement points. Small blood stains are nearly impossible to see on the infrared spectrum, as the reflectance of the stain is often nearly identical to the surface on which it resides. Not to mention, the laser spot is probably picking up more wall than the stain as a result of the spot size mentioned earlier. This means that the infrared return that you're getting with the wall paint averaged in is going to be nearly identical to the blood itself. Therefore, we're relying on the photo panorama to locate the stain, not the actual infrared measurement of the area the stain was taken. This brings in a layer of complexity as the panorama alignment, distortion, and exposure are all out of the user's control. So now that we know the challenges associated with this task, let's get into how to use your X7 to face these challenges head on and build a case on good, solid technique, not marketing and sales talking points. Starting with panorama creation, there's a setting in the Capture X7 plugin that changes how many photos are taken during the panorama portion of the scan process. To get to it, open the menu and go to settings. There in the images area, you can select whether you want 15 or 30 images per panorama. More images results in a higher quality photo panorama, but it also adds time to each scan. For minute evidence like stains, it's a good idea to bump up to the 30 image setting when you need it. Then go back to 15 images per scan when you need to save time. The next thing we can do is lock our white balance to avoid changes in the photo color between station moves. Now to lock your white balance, tap the scan settings flyout on the bottom of the screen. There, you can select the white balance that best applies to your lighting. Remember that if your light source changes, you need to go back in and update it to match what the new light source is. Also, depending on your lighting conditions, you may want to enable HDR or high dynamic range. What this does is lighten parts of the scene panorama that are dark and darken the bright areas to ensure that bright spots aren't washed out. This is accomplished by taking a series of photos from the same position. One is overexposed to capture dark areas, one is underexposed to capture the bright areas, and the images are blended together in the software. Now this adds time to your photographs, so balance the urgency with necessity as you see fit. To see your panorama results on the tablet, tap on the station list and tap on details. Next, tap on process images. Here you have two options. One is to see the preview, which is a fast process and gives you an idea if your settings are correct. The colorized point cloud and associated high quality panorama option will take a little bit longer to process, but will show you what the final product will look like. 
Just because the pano is processing doesn't mean you have to stop working, though. You can keep scanning while the panorama is generated. Now that we have the photograph settings out of the way, let's talk about the actual measurements. Because laser scanning is indiscriminate, the points measured by the instrument may or may not be the actual location of the stain you want. Depending on scan density, your stain may actually fall between points. The ability to actively point out and directly instruct the instrument to gather that exact point right there has been reserved for optical total station users. Until now. The Trimble X7 possesses a feature you won't find on other scanners on the market, and that is the laser pointer and precision point features. To use these features, conduct a scan of your area. Once your scan is finished, don't move the instrument. To annotate the stain location, tap on the annotation icon, then create new. Because we want to use the laser pointer, enable it in the upper left, then change the point type to precision point. Using the screen, tap and drag to rotate the instrument so that your laser pointer is on the stain that you want to measure. Next, scan the point. The instrument will run a quick calibration check and then conduct a small scan of the area around and over the stain. A point is computed and placed where the laser is pointed. Next, give the point a name, and you can also snap a photo with the tablet for a reminder. Now keep in mind, if you're using photographs to measure the stain for a trajectory calculation, you'll want to use a good quality DSLR. This photo with the tablet is just for reference, and can be used to show that the laser was accurately on the stain in question. Now on the topic of accuracy, the laser pointer is also part of the X7's field calibration procedure, and you're given a report that the accuracy of the pointer is within the manufacturer's specifications. That wraps up this week's tip. The Trimble X7 is a perfect tool for crime scene documentation where blood pattern analysis is a component of the investigation, making sure that your scene is forensically sound using defensible methods, not just a sales pitch. We've seen some junk put out there to sell a product, and we want to deliver on what's actually important, accuracy and completeness. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up, and if you're interested in knowing more about the Trimble X7 solution or crime scene training with the Trimble Forensic Solutions, be sure to contact your local Trimble dealer to ask about the Trimble Forensic Certified Training for your department. See you next week. Stay safe.